What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the What's Up, Everybody podcast here with my co-host and brother, Sweet T. What's up, man? What's up? We're back at it. We're back at it, dude. Busy weekend. Busy weekend. Yeah. Lots going on. Missed you at Sparring Saturday. Slacking off, dude. I wasn't slacking. I had a calf injury later on in the week. And I do believe it was because I didn't drink enough water. Water is key. Yeah. Got to stay hydrated. You know, if, if it's not, if it's not, you know, soda, sweet tea, or an energy drink, like, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To be fair, you don't drink a whole lot of soda. I really Definitely don't. not as much as, as really everybody did back in the day. Yeah. But, um... I tore up the Mountain Dew, so. Yeah, you did. Yeah. We so had I, Mountain Dew caught the bad rap of the of the yellow 40 in it. The bad, yeah. I mean, there was a lot. Like, I feel like everybody was, was just kind of bullying Mountain Dew for Mountain some reason. Mountain Dew. I it's mean, like the for worst sure. The worst, like, you know? rats dissolved in it type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, so, it was bad. That, that you know, I stopped. And there was some uh, there were some other rumors going around. If you drank Mountain Dew, it would make certain things smaller. Yeah. But I stopped. As soon as that was published... <laughs> In a scientific document, I don't think it was a scientific uh, document. So Mountain Dew got took took a bad rap there. Yeah, dude, we had, I, I we had stopped. To quit in, the Mountain Dew. Stopped instantly before it went into effect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you do drink a lot of energy drinks, and I, I don't I see to. you drinking a whole lot of water. Right, like the energy drinks are definitely the top of the list because you know how my day is. Top three energy drinks go. Oh my gosh, number one, I would say Bang. Ooh. I love the Bangs, man. Two, I would go with rains, like certain rains. Yeah, like the, um, like the white gummy bear. Yeah, oh, those are so good. Three, mm -hmm. I've never been a monster guy for some reason. Never been a monster energy guy. I, I got a weird taste. I used have, to not like monster, yeah. and then I really enjoyed monster. Yeah, I can tell, because you, like you like the white ones. What are, what are those? What, what's the difference between those and the other ones? Uh, less calories. Oh, just The less regular calories. monsters, they have like 140, 120 calories a can. Yeah. And then like the white. I forget what white lightning or whatever the heck it's called. It's yeah. got like 10 calories. So, so bang rain. And then like the, if it's not 300, yeah, I don't want it. You know, if it's yeah. not a, and my third, it would be the, like the pineapple, the yellow, uh, Red Bulls, whatever, whatever flavor that is. Like a I never flavor. drink Red Bulls. Yeah, why, I've never been that? into Red Bulls. Really? It's like lower caffeine than any of the other I don't ones. want lower caffeine. I, I get, know. Yeah. I get around. Yeah. Well, yeah, they have the higher, but I get into drinking it like it it helps with my conscious knowing the fact that like all the stuff on the outside of rains and on the can it's got like the vitamins and CoQ10 minerals. for your yeah. heart electrolytes <laughs> yeah so it makes BCAAs. it better BCAAs in my head it makes it better to drink yeah it, and like bang know? they have like that that cre that cre crea pure creatine <laughs> but it's like not real creatine yeah, or whatever yeah. it's like pure, crea <laughs> like pure, not enough crea, to do crea really. pure <laughs> it's just a powder we call cre it's, we, it's yeah. like creatine I don't know, but uh, that, so yeah, I ended up hurting my, my calf. So my strength and conditioning coach told me to take it easy Saturday. So, cause I know it's during strength and conditioning this coming week, we're going towards more of like explosive movements, things like that. So he wants me to be nice and healed up. Okay. Without giving too much away, you, so you guys have like plans. I know, jo I know coach Josh, awesome, awesome coach. He's been the S and C uh, coach here for years now. Yeah. He's awesome. Um, do you do you have like what are your goals right now? Like when you when you're 39 years old, and you are what some would say towards the latter part of your career, what's the main goal when you're doing strength and conditioning? Because obviously you're not going to be able to put on muscle and you know still be able to maintain your weight like if you were younger. Right. Right. So is it more about your explosiveness is it more about endurance is it more about like are you just doing like physical therapy stuff because you don't want to break a hip it's funny that you say that because we do all of that we have certain weeks that we go throughout the a month or several months right we'll go three weeks of kind of bulking a little bit putting on muscle i can tell can you tell mm -hmm. and then we'll go through a week of <clears throat> when we're just building like explosiveness and then we'll go through a week of where it's more like cardio base. So we kind of trim back down. Whenever I lift heavy, I don't know what it is, but I get so flipping hungry. I eat anything, it, dude, everything. It's exactly what it is. When you God. lift weights, it's like the thing. Like when you lift weights, 
not only do you burn a ton of calories while lifting weights, but because of all of the stuff that your body is doing, like physiologically, yeah, you continue to burn calories throughout the entire day. So hungry. So, so I just, gain weight. And, and it's a natural response. You burn all those calories. You tear up those muscles. What do you need in order to be able to heal? You That's need right. nutrition. Yeah. So your body's like, all right. So we got that. And it's funny because, you know, we, we, we go through where I bulk up. I get a little heavy. And this is the heaviest I've been in a while. I'm, I, I'm right at 200 pounds the other day. And I think I've come down the next two. It's, me being 39, I have a really high metabolism. So it really depends on what your, your body is like. And everybody's body's different. But for me, I've really never had to watch what I ate. Mm -hmm. And then it's funny, I can be 200 today. And in two days, be it like, you know, lost eight, five, eight, nine pounds. Mm -hmm. It's wild. So right now it's just kind of. Imagine what, how much you could lose if you actually drank water. If I just drink water, I know. No, no, I mean like if you just drink water. If you like just drink water. General, period. Like if you just drink more water. Yeah. You would lose more weight. I think so. So, so you I, need I to gotta drink more water. More, yeah, stay hydrated. Help flush a lot of that stuff out. But like you said, kind of um, talking about what you were talking about, we do all that. So we cool. work on strength, explosiveness, and at, after every training session, we'll do uh, some physical therapy work. Ankles, knees, uh, but all in all, just staying healthy. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like, um, do you have any like, uh, I don't want to say like weak areas, but are there any areas where you're like, dude, I want to do these more or I need to do these more? Like cause the, with you, it's like you don't train like a normal fighter because you do different things in the cage. Right. So like, for example, when Gilbert Burns went to fight you, they showed him videos. They showed him doing videos and he still does it like this where he's just like a squeezing stuff and like yeah. holding stuff. Just and holding. <laughs> he was really good at that. He was very fought. good at that. But obviously that's not how you fight. So... You know, whenever Josh first came on the scene, was he having to like kind of figure you out? Hundred percent. Yeah, we did like a. We had this one my first training session with him, and it was more of like a, all right, overall assessment mm -hmm. on where my strengths are, where my weaknesses are, um, and he can tell. He can sit there and look at my body. And he can tell my right hip isn't as strong as my left. Uh, maybe it's because even though my left knee, I had all the surgeries, but I compensated. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, maybe it's also because my, my left side is stronger than my right, even though my, I, my, my right kicking leg is stronger, more powerful, but my left is more stable. So my balance is better on that side than my right. So there's it's a lot going involved. Works, I know man. there's a lot involved in that and what you can make stronger. You know, obviously number one work was my hamstrings. I had zero hamstrings. I was all quad. And I think that's had a lot to do with my injuries, injuring my knees, because everything wasn't, you know, equal, you know? Because mm -hmm. certain conditioning when you were kickboxing was not even like a thing. I, yeah, I didn't even do it. It was like a hobby. Yeah. It wasn't even like, hey, let's go, put, let's go, yeah, let's go work let's, out. Let's train for our sport. No, yeah. It was like, nah. And now it's like so down to a science. I feel like Dolph Lundgren, whenever he's getting ready for rock, he just like, you have this guy studying, he's got a clipboard, he's like watching everything <laughs> yeah. you make, you know? So and then they, they actually have, full institutes for that now like the ufcpi that's and crazy. stuff like yeah, that yeah i love it but um, yeah that's that's kind of like what's going on right now right now staying healthy and um when it comes to my strength and conditioning just just trying to get stronger keep the weight low getting stronger keep the weight low but obviously keeping the speed up that's hard you know like what they say at 30 or 35 like your speed drops every year or something like that mm -hmm. after I, 35 pretty it's pretty much just downhill well i feel naturally I feel like physiologically a, yeah, yeah. i like yeah. using that word you have to like well that's why people after 35 they start supplementing with different hormone therapies yeah. and stuff like that obviously you can't do that but no i feel good if i if if i didn't have to deal with the knee injuries and the knee problems from time to time. There's a lot of things I can't do because my knee hurts today or it hurts for the next few days. And I'll do one thing in sparring and then, you know, my right knee or and it really goes back and forth with my knees. So I can't run today because it's like swollen today for some reason. Mm -hmm. And when things swell up, the muscles don't rack, act right. You know, they don't fire right. So you're in potential of injuring yourself even more. Yep. If I had my knees that I had when I was freaking before my before my my first major knee injury, bro. No, you, you only had one major knee major. injury, right? But you yeah. you so that was your left knee. Yeah, I've had I've had four on uh, surgeries on my left, yeah. and I've had two meniscus on my right. Okay, so your so your meniscus is your right. You didn't have like any ligament damage on your right, no, did you? Nothing on my right. 
So, Dang. yeah, I mean, even, even so like in doing a, a round off, right? That explosiveness when you're, when you're hitting the floor. For those who don't round off is, it's like a, a, a super aggressive cartwheel. Right. And when your feet hit the floor, it's like an instant explosion up, right? You try and get it as high as you can. I can't do those anymore. It's crazy because we used to flip all the time. All the time. Used to be an animal flipper. This dude was, we used to go to a hobby recreational gymnastics gym, right? It was called Fun Gym. Every Friday. it was like every Friday you would go there and hang out. It was just like literally they just, you signed a waiver, you paid. Three bucks or something like that. uh, It wasn't that cheap. But you paid a few bucks for however many hours you wanted to. (laughs) Yeah, that's what (laughs) Uh, to just use their stuff, do their springboards, their trampolines, stuff like that. No training, no cheerleading experience, no gymnastics experience. He's out there hitting double backs, double fools. You were doing Freaking, double fools, um, man. Uh, uh, Arabian backs, which yeah. is like a, like a, you start forwards, you do a half a spin, and then you do a backflip out of that. It's just nuts. We'd just do the craziest we would, stuff. We'd go there like every weekend. Yeah, it was, that was, it was back fun. before technology. We would do, we would do really double exploded. backs, double on the tramp too. We would do the misty backs on the on the like the the trampoline. We were nuts, man. And, and then you'd have they'd be like asking, like, "Hey, you want to be a part of our cheer team?" We're like, "No, <laughs> no. we don't cheerlead." <laughs> <laughs> I remember you. We beat I know. Up cheerleaders. I remember Tony no, being out kidding. there. Like there was a bunch of cheerleaders his age out there, and Tony's out there flipping and flopping. <laughs> and to get Flop, the girl, he said flipping. flopping. <laughs> you were, you were, you were. You were probably just as good or better than I was. Definitely. And no. to get all the girls to look at him, Tony would just cough really loud, or she'd be like, <laughs> just to get everybody to turn towards him. So before he does his tumble pass, I would yeah. just crack up, dude. <laughs> oh, it was funny. Oh man, those were the days. Those were High the days. school days. Oh man, but yeah. So it's it's my knees. That's I, I feel that's holding me back. If. Now, is that a physical or is that a mental thing? Or or is it... I think it might be a combination of both because once my knees do hurt a little bit, I know for when, when they start to swell, the muscles don't fire right. So mentally, I'm like, I shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Which now, I think it's it's taught me to be more wise, I guess, with my actions. Because before, I would just do anything and everything. Anything. I would do anything. I'm cutting flips off of the old karate school. Remember Dude. That? He jumped off of a building onto a sand pit, barefooted, onto concrete. There was no, no, it was just like one night, they were doing work on the side of our, essentially it was a two-story building. Yeah. So it was a probably 20, 20, 20 or so feet up. Yeah. yeah. And Nothing it, but it concrete, just, just, parking I remember lot. being younger, so it just seems like it was 100 mm-hmm. stories high when you're little, you know, everything is just massive. And... They were doing work out there, doing construction work, and they just had this huge pile of sand. Now I say huge, but it really wasn't that big. It wasn't yeah. big enough to where you should be it jumping off the building. Substantially decrease the height of the building or anything. But he's like, "Dude, I'm gonna jump off the building onto the sand pit." And I'm pretty sure he did it <laughs> twice. I know that that was my head. Like, I saw it. And I had what I wanted to do off uh, what I wanted to do, and I would just do it. No, no questions asked. I literally felt like I could do anything, mm-hmm. anything. And I was probably. I was mid or early mid twenties at the time. No, when did you get hurt? Two, th- yeah, two thousand five. Two thousand six. You like 24, 25 when you got hurt? Yeah, I think so. So early twenties. So you were, you were like eighteen. 19. I mean, we were running up walls, doing backflips. I was, I was going from like we were up on top of the building, jumping from one building to the next. We were just doing stupid stuff. That's what you did when you didn't have technology. You yeah. Figured out what to do, and you jumped off buildings on the <laughs> sand pits. Off of two story houses onto with, the ground. With Literally, it was a sand pit in the middle of a parking lot. So there wasn't, like, extra grass that he could, you know, have an extra padding. Pushing. It was sand to asphalt. <laughs> He's jumping off of this building onto this sand pit. But injuries, man. It just yeah. was thinking when you were talking about it, you know, how we live life and different things that we do uh, create different deficiencies in different areas. Like, you literally have to start as an infant, knowing, you know, like building everything up together if you want to be as efficient as possible when you yeah. get older. Because yeah. once you get older, you're, you're basically just correcting a whole bunch of stuff that took place before you even realized what was going on. Yeah. Right? Like your left knee is stronger or, and your right hip is stronger or and I, it creates all of these different 
But I think, you know, us growing up in the martial arts and us being as crazy as we were, flipping and flopping, we were... 100%. We were just like, that was that. It was probably my peak, mm -hmm. I think, just overall physical self. Because, I mean, we could jump, we could dive over a... This dude, what, a, we would play this game called Loser Pit, and we still do it in karate. Yeah. And we had one of our karate parents took these PVC pipes and made, like, a field goal type deal with it. We had a crash pad, and we had like almost like there it was, was such a it was such a, a a hit with us and our students that we had parents create invent contraptions specifically for this, for this game. game, and it's the opposite of limbo. Instead yep. of going underneath, you had to jump over top of this thing, and I could literally run and just jump over somebody who was like, I mean, just with my feet. Remember that we were just jumping over. I don't know. 5'11", 5'10", maybe? Six feet. Six foot. Yeah. And landing, jumping off of my feet, over it, and landing on my feet. That's how high we I could jump. And then we had it to where you, you can move the bar up even higher. And I think the highest we got over, we were we were doing round offs, exploding like we would do a backflip, diving over the bar at seven, I think it was like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, yeah, it was like 6'4". Flipping and then landing on our feet. Just because that's what you did. We would go to the karate school. Just to play the game. Just to play the game. Just us. On the weekends, we would always go see a movie yep. every weekend. And then afterwards, we'd go back to the karate school and play like fire. Play some games with our buds, man. Wall ball. The original or, Shinru clan, dude. Yeah. That's just what you did whenever you were younger. And as a martial artist, we literally lived in the dojo forever. Yeah. This, so always. that was, it's funny how that, and now I look back like, I'm. now I realize what other people are like, man, I wish I could go back and do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everything, everything, everything else on my body feels, feels fine. It's yeah. just my knees. So if I felt like I had those knees back, I'll be good. So now I just gotta watch, make sure my knees are fine. You know, go through a good camp, sparring with good people, um, and not people that will potentially or accidentally hurt you. Accidents happen all the time, but you can limit that by sparring with good people, good partners. Yeah. So you know, I'm constantly thinking about that. Yeah. So staying healthy, man. Staying healthy. I'm 39, but I feel I feel fine physically. I feel fine. Um. So yeah. Speaking of 39. What sweet tea? Um, what you got? What you got? Leoto Machida, oh, man. man. Bellator. This Is he 39? Weekend. I don't know. I'm no, he's got to be. Up. He's 40. He's 43. I'm pretty sure. What? That was like super specific. Yeah. You know? I, I don't know why, but I. He is 43 years wow, old. I don't know that. I don't know. Man. Gets Bellator. Which Bellator is this, by the way? Um, Bellator London. Not sure. There were two fights on that card that I was most interested in, and that was the Leota Machida, right? Yeah. Which we can talk about that. He fought Leon Edwards, little big brother, similar to us. You might is that his little big, brother? Yeah, he's a, he's a Edwards. I know he's an Edwards, but it is I his think little, it's his, it I think his it's younger his younger brother. brother. Um, I believe it's his younger brother. And he knocked out Leo Machida in which round? Which round was that? Um, it was the first round. Yeah, Three elbow, man. Now, now Stacking granted, him. I don't know what he looked like prior to that, but uh, it was a clean elbow out of the break. Yeah. It took him out. When you're 43 years old, I mean, I'm looking at his record right now. But if you look um, at Leo Machida, he looks like a guy who ages <laughs> very well. You know what I mean? Yeah. He ages very well. He doesn't look that old. He looked great well, out there. Well, uh, that's like that um, – you know, a lot of the Brazilians yeah. who, are, who are older. Japanese. Yeah. He's, got, he's that he's, Japanese Brazilian mix, you know? So he's, you know, um, a lot of the Brazilians are older. They look younger, like uh, Gleason Tebow. Yeah. Or, uh, no, no, was it Tebow? No, no, not Tebow. Who just fought in the last card that we watched? He's been fighting for forever. Oh. Um, he fought at 170. Oh, you talking about uh, Sergio? Is it Sergio, the Brazilian guy? No. I was, he was I, older. Francisco was, Trinaldo. Yeah, yeah, Trinaldo. That's Trinaldo. right. Yeah, Trinaldo. I always get T-Bow and Trinaldo mixed up. You know, they 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 keep that young look. But um, yeah, he's forty three years old. He's lost his last four fights. Dang. Split decision. Split decision. He lost split decision to Gegard. Yeah. Split decision to Phil. Phil Davis. I mean, these guys are are at the decision you know, to to Ryan Bader. Younger, and they're top of their game right now. So it's not like he's getting destroyed out there. He got right. caught with a clean elbow on the break. He got hurt. Got staggered. And yeah, man. Uh what is what is uh Edwards' record? 
Um, How many times has he fought for Bellator? A couple of times. Yeah. Oh, you know who also won? Who? Oh yeah, Cardi um, not not the Cardi No, but yeah. his brother, um, Oliver. In Oliver, camp. that was he a did sick submission. Via crazy buggy choke submission. Yeah, buggy choke submission. That was awesome. Good for him, dude. He's ten and two. He's ten and two. He fights at one eighty five. Yeah. Who does? Oh wow, he he was actually on a little bit of a losing streak until he beat. I mean okay. he he wasn't on a losing streak. He so it was one eighty five, not two hundred five. Um, that fight was at, I think it was at 185. Okay. So yeah, Not man, sure. Leo Tomachita got stopped. And then the other fight that I was really looking at, obviously, um, MVP. Craig, no, no um, cr- Oliver, Oliver, he did good. Yeah, I was, looking that at was that. a, that was a battle. That was good. Until though. he locked in that sick choke. Yeah. It's funny how his, how his legs ended up. He still got a choke off of that. Like yeah. there's, there's literally a submission for every position you can be in. You could possibly mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. it was wild, but it was, it was cool. The, how he just locked that in and but you don't see that. You don't see that happen very often. No, I think they said it was the first one in Bellator history really? or something like that. You got to get a bonus for that. I don't think Bellator even does bonuses, but <laughs> I don't know. And then obviously the, um, MVP, MVP fight, MB, MVP fight. I felt, I felt for him. Because I've been there. I know y'all can relate. We can relate. Um, and London, too. So that's got to be a sucky place to lose in your hometown. But And to lose like that. Yeah. Just be just being wrestled, man. Just mm-hmm. just being wrestled. I know. Now, I know it's obviously not. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't the most eventful at all. <laughs> But I mean, it's he won with him the he rule won. set. Yeah, just like it is what it just is. Just like right? me, man. Like, it wasn't exciting, you but can't he go won. Ch- you can't go changing. The only thing you could do to try and limit that would be to. I I feel like personally, I feel like referees and especially as of like recently, like yeah. really like like real recent within the last five years, they've really gone wrestling heavy yeah. in terms of their judging. Yeah, yeah. Right, like I've seen. Um, you well, look could be Rose, striking somebody no, is, yeah. and then get taken down one time and they're like, all right, he got the takedown, win. Or you could be winning four minutes and they take you down for a minute and then, oh, he got the win. I mean, I look at, I feel like damage is more important than control, right? So they look at that as control, but mm-hmm. you could be off of your back and throw elbows and punches, but you know, the other guy still gets the win because he took you down, even though he's taking the damage from and you. That back. was similar to what happened in the MVP fight. Yeah. He was doing elbows. He was doing damage from his back, but because he was on his back, it's like they don't count. Yeah. I don't get that. We need to you know what I mean? go back and look at that rule set. You know, the rule sets, but Who it is knows? what it is. Who knows? It's bummed, but it's, it's, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have that, you have that complaint or that issue and you're seeing it a lot. I'm seeing a lot more with you, obviously. Um, just, you know, recency bias, but uh, it's not a fun way, but hey, they win and yep. it's allowed. I so. know. It. So we got to c- continue to grow and get better with what we do and mm-hmm. prevent it, you know. Mm-hmm. So you had the Bellator fights, you had the UFC fights yesterday. There's a lot of fights yesterday. There was a lot of different types of fights. A lot fights of fights happening. Saturday. I mean, you had Bellator, you had UFC, and you had Karate Combat. But getting into the UFC, Michael Johnson with a win, man. Mm-hmm. He got a win. Let's go. Um, great combination that he landed during that fight. Ended up getting the KO, which was awesome. I don't remember. He was on a losing streak, I think. Maybe. Something like that. Yeah. I haven't heard his name for a while. So Michael Johnson got the W. Um, and then there was there was a serious injury. Yes. Serious Unfortunate injury. way to end the main event. Um, a knee injury for yeah. Rockich. He's going to be out for a little while. ACL. Uh, I hope it's just the ACL. Now, he said uh, in one of his interviews that he had injured his, his what knee. What was the Instagram post? Instagram, that he injured it before. He felt a little something in his knee before the fight. And that's similar to how I ended up injuring mine. I was doing a flip at the mm-hmm. card school. Ended up hurting the inside of my knee, which is my MCL. And I didn't think anything of it. And it was probably torn. Went out there to fight. And that's what went first was my MCL then everything else. I did not know that you had injured it before I did. that. We were doing I was doing side flips, not really an aerial, but you just you 
it, you do like a like a just a side flip, like a mm. I don't know what you it's would like call a cartwheel it. with no hands. Yeah, cartwheel, but it wasn't an aerial. It's like you land sideways too. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I ended up um, injuring my knee. I felt a little tween. I remember that. It was like a week before the fight. We left. Uh, didn't think anything of it, you know, because you know me being that young, I heal up in like I'm like I'm like Wolverine, you know, you heal mm -hmm. up in no time. But I uh, went out there and fought, and ended up my the MCL, my knee went inward, so it was my NC, MCL that went first, and then everything else went. So yeah, ended up injuring it before, Hopefully and that's what happened here. ACL. Yeah, I hope so, because that's definitely a lot easier healing time than everything, because mm -hmm. then you're looking at meniscus tears. And things like that. When uh, when all your CLs blow, mm -hmm. you know that moves that knee is moving around a whole lot, and things start grinding. And next thing you know, you got you got they took forty percent of my meniscus out whenever I first injured my knee, and they had to go back in and take some more out. So dang, but I mean, I will say in his de in, in not in his defense, but in his you know in his favor, knee surgeries have gone like. Yeah, they've just skyrocketed in terms of effectiveness. I know, back when I played college football, if you tore your if you tore toward if you tore your ACL, you were out a minimum an entire year before they yeah. even like let you set back on the field. Well, I was, now they're tearing their ACLs and they're back before back the there. season ends and moving like it's nothing. Like I was out for three years yeah. and I was told I would never be able to fight again. <laughs> <laughs> and they're back in like they're back in man. you know months they're back out there yeah of course it's like the nfl and big time sports people but still it's a bummer it's always it's it's the injuries where you get hurt they're called non-contact injuries that are yeah. always the worst i know when when somebody's out there doing something like in football if somebody was out there doing something like a receiver was running a route or something and they went to do something, and no one was around them for yards, and they just went down. It's like you immediately knew, like, dang, yep, it ain't good. It's <laughs> something like, blew up. Yep, instantly, God. instantly. Um, it's terrible, man. Golly, and but you see it. What's crazy about your knees is like they they don't have anything. The way God made you with your knees and your cartilage, your meniscus. There's nothing out there that even comes close to that support you know what i mean there's nothing that they can put to replace that meniscus that's as good as your meniscus yeah like a like a you know? rubber band like, or like a I'm, bungee yeah. cord in i'm there. thinking like dude just put like a like a rubber just like a like a thick. thing yeah rubber thing in there that you know there's nothing else that holds up as good as your meniscus and it's like and you look at a meniscus it's like you know yeah it's like rubber yeah juicy yeah like it, it's a basically the same consistency and nothing else that lasts as long. It's nope. wild. Crazy, man. So, yeah, man, ha you know, hats off to Blahovich. Yep. Does he get the title shot immediately next? To Shara saying, you know. Bring just, it? He's saying bring it. He's he's fighting Yuri Prohaska um, on the 11th. Oh, yeah, June. Prohaska's good, dude. Dude, he's a wild the power man. power up of the fist. Yeah, I honestly see Glover taking him down, controlling him. Yeah, he's such a strong, he's a big dude. You don't Shara. realize, yeah. I mean, the other guy's he's got really that tall. Forty years of jujitsu strength. Oh, I know it, man. I feel like the older you get, the stronger you get. Mm -hmm. But he's what forty three. He's yeah. forty three. Dang, man. That's, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I want to be the oldest UFC fighter, CD. I know you I do. If but I you gotta, you gotta win if you want to make it there. I know bro. it. I know. You gotta it. get some W's. I'm just yeah. being honest with you. I'm glad you're being honest. I'm glad somebody is. You need it. But yeah, <laughs> he's fighting Prohaska. You know, Prohaska when is that? Is wild June June eleventh, I think. Okay. It's gonna be He's fighting Prohaska. I think Prohaska is susceptible to the takedown because he does like to do the crazy, flashy stuff. I think Teixeira can be patient, take him down. And if he takes you down, I don't think Prohaska is going to get back up. Yeah. Prohaska is exciting. He can catch you with anything, obviously. But Prohaska, too, he is a little – he gets a little wild. Yeah. And Glover, he's, he's got pretty clean, pretty pretty good hands. He's got good boxing skills. Yep. So he could probably put him to sleep. So. So, you know, you can go either way with him. I only see Prohaska Pro, Pro knocking him out. And to he, win to like, Glover, he can knock him out or take him down. So yeah. he's got more tools in his arsenal to win. Teixeira was like, "I win June 11th. You know, we'll fight again, me yeah. and you, brother. Let's do it, Blahovich." And then you had something that I've been a part of. You guys know out there uh, recently, season four of Karate Combat. They had their first event for season four this past Saturday, and let me tell you, man, it was awesome. They had some really 
cool stuff that I saw, especially with the the ring style that they have. It's called the pit. The pit. Mm-hmm. It's a little like inverted, you know. It's like a, mm-hmm. it's like in the ground, and some cool stuff like double legs running off of the slant wall and taking dudes down. Uh, good knockouts, spin kick knockouts. It was fun. Biggest, biggest noticeable differences between the striking of karate combat versus the striking of other sports. Do you do you have any takeaways there? Yeah, a lot of the guys in in the and that strictly come from just a karate background and don't have any full contact experience until they get to karate combat. Mm-hmm. They're used to throwing one shots, not combinations. Yeah, you know, so they leave themselves open after that first shot land. They're they're coming back to a good pose because you know a lot of the guys that they strike and they reach him really far, mm-hmm. and they're not thinking about following up afterwards. Um, another thing, they keep their chin up a lot. Mm-hmm. They're not kind of that boxing style head, in, in head down. Regular karate rules. It's not like you can, but it's obviously not the goal to knock somebody out. Right. It's the goal to just score on them. Yeah, fast and, and and there there is a there is different styles of karate. So let me let me get this straight. Not all karate is that way. Like Kyokushin, I mean, they're throwing combinations. Their body, their conditioning is there. You know, they're they're doing bare knuckle and bare feet. There are no pads at all. But then you have like the kumite, mm-hmm. or the American point fighting. It's one shot, right? Pop. Maybe yeah. maybe one or two. Pop pop. Right. But so what I see in the full contact realm when I saw in karate combat, one shot chamber. They're not following up. They're getting caught in between. You know, right after that first shot. Or or it's like one shot. Not really sure what to do next. Let me let me grapple a little bit. Yeah, to look for let me that hold sweep on. or like that. Let me just go hold you. Let the referee break us up and then get that one shot again. Yeah, and I also see between and you can tell which guys have done full contact before, like kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, or even some MMA. Mm-hmm. They're still karate black belts like myself. They just know how to. They have they have more of a grit to them. Mm-hmm. You know, they have more of a. I would say more more of an understanding of how to get hit. Yeah. And how to get hit hard. Mm-hmm. And and you know, you if you're not used to getting hit hard, when you get hit hard, you're like, what, what? the crap was that? I'm not that? used like, to this. I'm, even though you're okay, you don't know that. You don't realize that at the <laughs> yeah. moment. Yeah. So you like kind of panic and you kind of freak Duck out a your little head, bit or right? and it, do goofy stuff out there. Yeah. So I, 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 I've seen, I uh, saw a little bit of that, but also, you know, my man Ross Levine, he was main event. He looked phenomenal. You know, he's got that glory kickboxing experience. He's got the the karate, the point fighting, and he's able to combine that together. Mm-hmm. That's that's a scary dude. Spe- yeah, especially when you're going into that strictly karate world, right? right. Where people have only done karate. strictly karate. Yes, point they have fighting. good striking. Yes, they have good moving, good timing, good movement, good speed, good timing. But I think what he brings to the table that a lot of the other guys don't, and and is that experience. And in in their defense, there's been nothing like karate combat ever. No. In terms of full contact, KOs, money, yeah, you know, um, organized fighting for them. Um, so they they haven't had unless they wanted to transition out of karate and do like kickboxing or yep. something like that. There hasn't been a a platform like karate combat for them to get that experience. Yeah. So you're seeing some of those guys who have never done that style and you're seeing guys who have kind of moved over to that kickboxing, done a little bit of kickboxing there and have that full contact experience kind of combined. They're, 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 they're mixed. Like I saw dudes out there with cauliflower. I was like, I know he didn't get that from just karate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless they do a lot of punch into the head without headgear on. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of ear punches, a lot of ear punches right there. No, I remember in the old school boxing back in the like early 1900s, dudes had big cauliflower ear because they just got punched in the ear all the time. Yeah, you know, a lot of sparring. But so that was kind of like the difference that I saw between the two. So, um, you know, maybe you know these guys, and you're only going to see it get better. You're only going to see it grow. So now that these guys have a place to go to make money, make a living, they're going to really focus on that full contact and and start you know tweaking things here and there. Um, so, but somebody who has that full contact experience and knows what it's like to get, you know, to, to get hit and get hit hard and how to continue forward, but combine that with the karate speed and timing, man, you're, you see, 
you got so you got you, it's more you're going to see more knockouts from it mm-hmm. you know with that with all those combined so it was it was pretty fun pretty interesting for sure that's one thing that that's one of the the main criticisms that i have um personally with a lot of karate out there mm-hmm. like and this even, is before karate combat before we even looked into this this has been a pet peeve of yours yeah 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 it's just that a lot of karate schools especially here in america i'm not super familiar with obviously european or japanese yeah, yeah any like type of schools out there but a lot of schools here they don't emphasize the continuous sparring they don't uh-huh. emphasize the you got this time limit fight you yeah. know work your combination you're going to get hit you're going to hit the other person i'm not going to stop it every single time um because obviously with our martial arts training and yeah. our whole style is geared towards legit self-defense like yeah you know in a combative situation it's not going to be one punch stop somebody going to be that referee so we really emphasize the continuous sparring aspect here at our school and i think that's kind of what helps our kiddos transition over into the kickboxing a little bit easier yeah Yeah. whereas going from strictly a point fighting realm to the kickboxing realm or to the full contact realm (laughs) or not even so much point fighters because we have some pretty sick point fighters yeah, who are transitioning to kickboxing and they are crushing are doing it really well. Even like you know people like MVP and stuff like that. But the 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 karate schools that don't allow you to punch to the head. Yeah, it doesn't make or, sense, right? Yeah, stuff like that. It's like you're you're setting. If you're only teaching your martial art for sport, then you know have at They're it. They're not going to be yeah. But if you're teaching the martial arts for what it is supposed to be, and that's combat, um, you gotta have that continuous right. sparring. And that's what that's one of my pet peeves too. Like you get these you get these karate schools who only are for sport and I don't like and, and they're they're so hype about it or they they think they think literally think in their mind that they can just they're the man. Like they okay, you could be awesome at point fighting, but you know, and they start talking trash outside or, you know, you better, you better know how to f- actually fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get a lot of these guys who are just think there's the baddest dude on the planet at point fighting. And then they, that relates to all fighting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, like you have no idea. You don't even know what it feels like to get hit hard. So yeah. like be quiet. You yeah. know what I mean? So, and, and that's one of the things too, like, you know, it's become such a, such a, a it's such a, importance about just the sport mm-hmm. it, it, they they stray away from self-defense from what it was from intended what it's for. intended for right yeah and you're seeing that in other sports too uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu for instance you get a lot of schools that just focus on just the sport and in a real situation you know i'm not going to go out there and pull guard mm-hmm. you know this dude may have a knife on him you gotta think about that kind of stuff too so you got your schools that are strictly for self-defense and um you got some schools that are strictly for just the competition. And you got to find that guy for, for, for me, find a school that kind of does both, mm-hmm. you know, like our competition is mostly jujitsu and kickboxing. Like mm-hmm. that's how, that's our competition. Yeah. Not, not just focused on point. Fighting. At one time, it, at one time it was, yeah. we had a, we had a specific, we had a, uh, specifically a point fighting team back in the nineties. But that was Florida. secondary. Right. It, it was, was secondary. Like, we're here to learn the martial arts first Mm -hmm. and if you want to compete then you can come over here and and train for that as well yeah yeah so i think that's you know uh schools like that who don't really put their students in stressful situations or you know they kind of gives us a bad name because now you're a black belt and you can't take a punch Mm -hmm. or you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so it kind of gives us marsh our karate guys a bad name but you didn't yep. see that this weekend, man. Uh, no. Those guys out there in Cardi Combat were crushing it. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Crushing it. And I think, too, just to kind of retouch on the, the whole martial arts thing is we have so many kids that come in for the discipline and the learning the respect, learning the that a lot of those point – or not, I keep saying point, but sport karate schools, like they the kids don't get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you see a lot of times – in tournaments 
Yeah. You don't see the respect, the honor. You, you see those guys. You see coaches out there trying to fight each other. Yeah. You see you and you know you and your opponent out there because you got a point or you lost trying to fight each other. Parents mm-hmm. fighting each other. It's like and that's why one of the reasons why we kind of stepped back away from that uh, in the late early late nineties. We stepped back because it didn't. It wasn't what martial arts was supposed to be about. Yeah. So that's so, how we kind of we we stepped back and kind of did our own thing. And that's what's so great about the martial arts and that's what should be so great about the martial arts and i highly recommend you know looking into martial arts and karate schools and if you're in the area come see us upstate karate we'd love to have you because what we emphasize here again is what the martial arts should be about yes it's self-defense but it's also respect honor um helping each other get better discipline discipline um, and, and not discipline because, like, we're yelling at you. I mean, we do that if you're messing <laughs> around, obviously. But discipline because we require you to execute specific skills in a specific manner. And just by doing that and coaching you that, have to you have learn that discipline. Right. And hopefully, for me, at least it did, it carries into other things. 100% other life oh, oh, stuff. Yeah. The, kind of like the work ethic type deal right it teaches you yeah to- i literally got into co- one of the main points for me getting into college was my martial arts background because of those reasons he literally said like we know that because of your martial arts background that you are adaptable and we could put you anywhere and you'd, you'd pick it up quick you have good hand speed obviously um we sent in and this is my mom's idea brilliant a uh tape of my kickboxing fight Oh, no way. With my highlight high school football tape. What? Yeah, so they got both. And as soon as I got there, they're like, hey, yo, uh, I, Coach Burnham, this is the kid that knocked that dude out. <laughs> and I was like famous before I even got to the team and because they had like showed everybody on the yeah, team. Yeah, that knockout. The tape. So, but yeah, they were, they were like, to be honest, this is one, one of the main reasons we want you here. So if you're out there listening, you got youngins. Get them, or even yourself, get into martial arts. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Find a good school um, and uh, make sure it's, it's something that you're looking for. But go out there and have some fun because let me tell you, man, it's life-changing for sure on and, how and, you look at things. And don't, don't get us wrong. We're not saying the sport aspect is bad, but it shouldn't be primary. Right. You should have a nice base of what it was actually intended for Oose. as well. You know what I mean? Because yes, sir. That stuff is good too. Like I said, we got point fighters here who do an awesome in full contact, but they also understand how to fight and they're training with Steven and they're getting punched in the face and they're <laughs> doing all that stuff as well. So, yeah. And they're still world class point fighters. They still go all over the world, man. They got the Battle of Atlanta coming up, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm helping them get ready. They're, they're, they're piecing me up. Big help you are. I know, dude. They're piecing me up. Anyway, Sweet T, thanks for hanging out with me, man. Yes, sir. Squirrel. Snail. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Love y'all. Again, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Check us out. Like us. Thumbs up. Rate us. Five stars. 100%. Go get them. What's up? Hit them hard. Let us know. <laughs> Deuces. Peace, y'all.